Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, I'm gonna be showing you how to grow these. These are auto refill mason jar chilies. Peppers that I have grown in a daisy chaining auto refill mason jar hydroponic system. This hydroponic system refills from a float valve and daisy chains the nutrients along to the plants, passively keeping the nutrients and water to the roots of the plants, allowing you to grow any plant in a small space. The 3D prints will be available on my Patreon and I'll also be giving you an option for a non 3D printable version as well. Okay, so today we're going to be utilizing these. These are mason jar caps. And now this has definitely been done before, but the system that I've designed is going to mean that they're going to be automatically refilled. So the design is just a net cup within a mason cap screw, which allows you to have the plant situated in the neck of a mason jar. And the design incorporates two holes. One of the holes will be an inlet and the other will be an outlet, allowing them to be daisy chained. However, we're gonna talk about why you don't wanna daisy chain too many in a little bit. So I've got all of our caps and we can start to assemble the system essentially. Okay, so here I have all the mason jars we'll be using. I'm just gonna take the lids off them because we don't need the lids. Um, there is a version of this that works with the internal part of the lid. So you can just print the basket if you like. Uh, that will just give you an option to have a, maybe a cracky version uh, and it just uses less filament, obviously. These lids, these prints, they just sort of screw onto the top of your mason jar like so and they hold the plant in place so that, you know, it's held by the weight of the water and nutrient in the jar. And this is where I'm gonna show you how you can do this without a 3D print. Um, just make sure that you've got a net cup uh, with a large enough mouth that it just sort of sits over the top of your mason jar, or you can have one that fits into a mason jar like so, and you then just, and that holds in your neck cup uh, in a way that's gonna hold your plant sturdy upright. Now I'm working on getting these neck cup types into the Hydroland store for you guys as well. You would then stick your tubing through and use the neck cup to hold the tubing in place rather than having holes. Um, so we can just add these onto our mason jars and they should just all fit perfectly and screw on. There's a place for the plants or the grow media that we're going to be growing our plants in as well as two holes. Uh, one on each side, and to those holes. This is four millimeter tubing, and it should fit directly through the holes in the prints and down into our mason jars. We want to make them long enough to span from one mason jar to the next. And we can just cut ourselves as many of those as you need to connect up, however many mason jars you plan on connecting up. Okay, so now we're actually going to connect up our float valve and it's going to fit within our float valve assembly. This might be different by the time I release this. I might actually add in more holes so we can have all of our mason jars feed out of the one. We place our float valve into our mason jar lid and we place our mason jar lid onto our mason jar. Uh, we're actually gonna need a connection for the top of that a fitting that I can connect a hose directly to the top. That's going to allow us to refill our mason jar with a hose fitting that is connected to a reservoir. We'll connect up our jars. Probably just gonna start with four plants at this point in time. You want those hoses to be right to the bottom. And the way that it works is once that hose in the, between the two jars is completely full, it is actually going to act as a siphon between one and the next. So if this water level drops, this water level will drop also. We're, the way that we're gonna make sure that the siphon is active is, I'll show you. We're gonna work over the top of some kind of tray, something to catch water, because I guarantee this is not going to be as neat as I'm imagining. I'm gonna fill up one of our jars, and over here is the reservoir I'm actually going to be using for the whole grow, because it's feeding a couple of other things. I'm just gonna steal some of the nutrient out of it. 
Now I actually did try to get the chalkboard jars, the ones that you can get that are already covered in black, because I think that's a really good solution to stop light coming into the system. This is gonna allow me to demonstrate it to you at least. Just going to connect up these two jars. I'm going to put some nutrient into this one because we want that four millimeter pipe submerged. It's going to make sure it's submerged like so. And <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Now, if you can think of a better way of doing this, I'm all ears, but I just need to start the nutrient flowing out of the top jar and into the bottom through that pipe. And you can see the bubbles coming out of the pipe. And if I can get that, yeah, that's a siphon. So these two jars should now equalize. So I might just fast forward this section right now. That's pretty bloody cool. I'm very happy with that. Okay, and I didn't really waste much nutrient at all. The more I fill this jar up now, the more this jar will fill up. So if this jar were connected to a float valve, that means we can maintain the nutrient solutions level indefinitely. I'm very happy with how that worked out. With that in mind, we can set up our other, you should just be able to like seal your fingers around it. You also wanna make sure that you don't let this one into the air because it will actually fill up with air as well. So, oh, it's much simpler if you have it almost full. So just do it with the jars that are almost full. Perfect. Um, okay, so those two are set up. So the way that this is going to work, push these down into the float valve and you kind of want them in an orientation that pushes them forward like so and the float valve is sort of between them. We actually want this to be full when we're doing this. So you can either fill it with the float valve or have it filled like a little bit beforehand. Drop our float in. This is gonna fill up later anyway. Twist it like so and try and get as watertight as possible. So I'm just gonna push those through our holes into the daisy chain um, and below the water line, obviously. It's gonna lift it completely. And hopefully, I'm just gonna add in a line here. So we're gonna turn this off, cut the line, add in a piece of hose with a hose adapter, like so. We'll connect directly to the top of our float, like that. And I'll turn on the reservoir, and it's not feeding because this hose is actually above the water line. Just gonna add on some thread tape and add an elbow in. I think it'll be fine, come on. I'll turn it on and I'll see if that is. Yep. When I connect this up uh, and turn on, it should start running out of the end of our float here. And it is actually filling here. Oh my gosh, fantastic. We are all connected. The EC is uh, three and the pH is uh, six. Here I have Tabasco and Freshno chilies. And we're gonna see if we can grow some chili plants in our auto refill jars, which I think is very interesting. Okay, so to plant these, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my seedling. Um, they're actually rooted out into cocoa already that we just drop the seedling in like so. And all the cocoa that it's in already, they're kind of probably a bit big already for this, for this system. <laughs> they're gonna get big very fast, I'd say, and I've probably not given them enough room to grow themselves. Especially like, have a look at this one. <laughs> uh, I think I'm being silly here. Here's another chili, just a baby one. I'm not gonna put that big one in. I think it's just too big for the system. Um, we've got a bit of media fall through, but that's fine. So there's our chili plants planted. And I'm gonna put a light up over them. And the light I'm using is a Spider Farmer SF2000, which should be plenty powerful enough. Uh, I can even dim it. Um, down to probably about 50 just to start with. 
I'm going to start with about 350 par over the top of the seedlings, just to give them a bit of a chance to acclimatize. I'm going to set up some time-lapse cameras and we can see <laughs> if the system's worth setting up. The reason I'm doing this is because this is like a precursor to larger crack key systems that you can use this technique on. So think about a bucket system with hoses that are reinforced with a hoop over the top of them and you set this system up in not such a finicky way but it auto refills from a single bucket that has a float valve in it. Scalable. All right, let's set up the time lapse cameras and see how they grow. And will you have a look at that result? I'm actually really surprised that these chili plants fared so well. Call me impressed by this method actually. It's probably not the ideal situation for chili plants that you want to be massively productive because there is very limited root space. And I'd say that that's what we're seeing with some of the sizes of the leaves on these plants. We've quite obviously got two distinct types of chilies. I'm just gonna rearrange these quickly. It was quite hard with that Monstera. It's really nice. It was quite hard to see the chilies. Okay, so this system has performed very well. I do wanna discuss some anomalies that you would have seen in the time-lapse and the reason that there is no float valve. I actually had the float valve malfunction on me and I didn't replace it. Uh, you would have seen in the time lapse that the water level continually dropped uh, and on occasion the water level would bump. That was me topping it up manually in this single mason jar. This was absolutely fine because it just meant that I could fill up all of the jars with a single top up. Uh, just by adding in nutrient to this single hole and by filling up this one entire jar It would fill up each of these jars probably like a fifth if I needed to I could just come back in a little bit and top it up again So you can actually do this entire system without a float valve and that allows you to manually top them up the daisy chaining actually worked a treat and I don't really see any deficiencies um, in the plants on the externals that would have had the fresh nutrient have to travel 
two over. I'm gonna take all of these jars apart. We're going to have a look at the roots as well as I wanna test the pH and EC of each jar individually to see if there's any difference between the outer jars and the inner jars and just for pure curiosity's sake myself. Okay, so it's time for the fun stuff. Let's have a look at the roots and the values. So, the biggest one, this is the one that was in the root time lapse. We're just going to unscrew our lid. Slowly. There we go. They're actually remarkably white. For a passively oxygenated system, this isn't too bad. Definitely, it definitely smells a bit like algae. And obviously I would recommend covering your jars, but I wanted to show you what was going on inside. Look at those roots. Pop that down and we'll have a look at the EC and the pH. So the pH is 5.5. That is an absolutely fine pH. Um, yeah, we can work with that. <laughs> Wowza. Okay, so this is, this is actually surprising. Uh, that is the EC, 6.96, practically seven EC. And these chilies are handling it absolutely fine. Okay, so what this is actually telling me is that the water is being selectively uptaken from the nutrient solution. So what that means practically is you're probably gonna wanna refill this with a weak nutrient solution. Very weak. I'm talking like one third nutrient. What that's gonna do is it's going to deliver more water than nutrient because these plants are obviously utilizing a lot more a lot more water because I mean for a chili plant to grow this big it's gonna need more water than one mason jar which is interesting let's have a look at the nutrient in the jar that we refill from pH 6 EC is only 1.74 <laughs> so you can see the difference well let's have a look at the middle jar then because that's going to give us the difference across the two. Roots again. Look at that. It's just a basket of roots. And this plant is remarkably healthy. Okay, we are dead in the middle. 2.52. That's EC, uh, pH, 6.3. So pH is absolutely fine. What this is telling me is we really don't want to daisy chain these more than once, you know? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in more holes to our float valve. And I'm also going to create one with a larger opening so that you can just refill with a watering can. But I would recommend having them all come out of the refill res. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to stop the buildup as the nutrient solution compounds. But I mean, have a look at this plant. It isn't ideally healthy. You can see the leaves are a bit stressed. It's handling it. I don't know. I think I like this system. Very interesting numbers coming out of these jars. And if you are more sensible than me and put plants that would actually thrive in these jars, like leafy greens or smaller plants, I actually think that this system could be very productive for a lot of people. So if you want the 3D print files, they are available on my Patreon and they will be released as this video is being released. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. Happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time. Let's have a look at the roots of these other plants. A twist. That's like a single root coming out of that one and then just masses down the bottom. And there we go. Yeah, I like this system. I think lettuce. Lettuce would be ideal. Absolutely. <laughs>